didn't vote? No. Why not? I'm the director of the FBI. I'm trying to be outside of politics and that I shouldn't be choosing between the candidates. Well, sure, Jim Comey ignored obvious misconduct by former Attorney General Loretta Lynch and his loathsome, dishonest friend James Clapper while deciding that Donald Trump was a Russian agent because he didn't put hate Putin loudly enough. But don't worry, he's not really a political person, just a disinterested lawman. Dan Bongino is an NRA TV contributor, former Secret Service agent, and he joins us tonight. Um, so is that the state? I mean, I'm just, I guess I'm fixated on this because I, I feel like American society is changing so fast. I'm trying to keep up. But is it allowed yeah. not to ritually denounce Vladimir Putin anymore? No, apparently not. You probably should tweet about it all day, how much you can't stand Vladimir Putin to Many vaccinate do. yourself. Yeah, yeah, you should. You must all day to vaccinate yourself <laughs> against disingenuous attacks by kooky liberals in the media. Do you open up a social media account just to denounce Vladimir Putin if you're a conservative? Do yourself a favor. Tucker, <laughs> this is the most absurd statement in that whole thing is him insinuating, Comey that is, that he's a nonpartisan actor. Let's be crystal clear on this. He admitted that some of his actions were possibly influenced by the poll numbers and that Hillary Clinton would be the next president. So let's just do a visual for the libs here, right? So you have blind lady justice with the blindfold who's peeking out at the poll numbers and saying, oh, Hillary Clinton may be the president. That is the very definition of politically motivated actions, but Comey doesn't seem to get that. And what's scary is he was the FBI director and was an investigator. Do you, do you think he, I mean, I'm trying to, it, it sort of take from his statements what it must be like at the highest levels of the FBI. Is it that he lives in a world where everybody agrees with him over at the FBI and at DOJ and doesn't know that his views are political when they are? Or is he just uniquely unself aware? Or what's going on here? What I have a really solid source on this for a long time now. I was very upset with the way things went down at the FBI, Tucker. And the way he phrased it to me was there was kind of a cult of Comey there. Yeah. Um, that at times he could be a part-time director. Sometimes he would leave on Monday, uh, not be there Monday, not be there Friday. He'd spend time in his other house somewhere else. Uh, but that there was a cult of Comey. And it was all around this self-image that he, would this, he was this virtuous white knight who was outside the fray. But Tucker, someone who does that. Now listen, I get it when political people make attacks, all right? I'm not excusing going after people on Twitter all the time. Yeah. I do it too. But when you're the FBI director and you're on a, in a nationally televised interview and you're mentioning in your book things like the president's tan lines and the size of his hands in your book, I mean, this is, this is just the disgraceful. If you did that in the Secret Service and got caught uh, when I was there, got commenting on the president's looks or his, person, or his marriage, you'd get the boot out of there so fast that door would hit you right in the butt on the way out. Well, yeah, because you have a gun and you have permission to use it against American citizens. So the standard's higher for you. This guy put Martha Stewart in prison. And I'm glad he did. By the way, I slept easy when she was finally put away. But I mean, yeah, abuse of power. Dan, thank you. Great to see you. You too. President Trump's personal attorney, Michael Cohen, made an appearance in court today briefly. It was a significant moment, but the press focused on porn star Stormy Daniels, who made an appearance in the gallery. Watch. Oh, be careful, hey guys. Be careful now. Did you have a message for the president? Whoa, whoa. Well, Daniel's got the most attention today, but obviously she's a sideshow, just another act in our never-ending circus. The real news came at the hearing itself. Michael Cohen was forced to hand over a list of his clients to a judge. Among those on the list was our friend Sean Hannity in the hour after ours. Judge Kimba Wood ordered Hannity's identity revealed, even though Hannity had specifically requested that his name remain private, which is his right. A couple of hours ago, Sean issued the statement, quote, Michael Cohen has never represented me in any matter. I never retained him, received an invoice, or paid legal fees. I have occasionally had brief discussions with him about legal questions about which I wanted his input and perspective, end quote. Sean plans to address this more broadly in just a bit on Fox. But keep in mind that Sean Hannity is a talk show host. He's not under investigation by anyone for anything. Who he hires as a lawyer and why is nobody's business. No judge has a right to violate his privacy or anybody else's. Those used to be the rules, but the rules have changed. The point of the Russia investigation, you may have figured out, is not to find collusion. There was no collusion. Everybody knows that. Everyone's always known that. The point is and was to hurt Trump and anyone close to Trump. And by the way, it's working. Now, maybe you hate Trump and you're happy about that. 
But what are the rest of us losing in this process? Attorney-client privilege no longer means anything. We learned that the other day. Neither does privacy or public reputation or fairness. If Cohen's other clients can be exposed by the left solely to embarrass them, what is the next step exactly? Could you punish a Trump ally by, I don't know, revealing his internet search history? What about someone's medical records? How about a private conversation with a priest or rabbi? Why not? All of that will happen, no question. And when it does, the left will cheer because extremism in the pursuit of Trump is no vice, according to them. The question is, do you really want to live in a country like that? Who would? Well, American bombs will be falling on Syria, but that's not the country that actually matters. Are we lurching toward a major confrontation with Iran and Russia? It seems that way. We'll tell you more when we come back.